Please always remember and don't ever forget. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, 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 I forgot. <laughs> I am David Levin, and welcome to another Fakakta episode of Pop Goes the Culture, the untold pop culture stories you wouldn't have known unless you were there. Today, part five of my seven-part conversation with the late, great Pat Harrington, Jr. Harrington passed away in 2016, but I'm happy to bring you this archival interview. Today, Pat talks about his late-in-life onstage collaboration with Howard Storm, one of the great sitcom directors. He also reveals all about the birth of Schneider and how he brought that iconic superintendent to life on One Day at a Time. So after Showboat, where would we go from there? Uh, let's see. Um, oh, I, let me tell you about Howie Storm and me. Howie Storm uh, and I go back to 1960, 61. Well, Howie was, uh, was, we both were New York kids. He was born and raised in the uh, Lower East Side, the, the Jewish ghetto, and I was born and raised in, in Hell's Kitchen, the Irish ghetto. So we had all of that in common. Um, he went into cafes, you know, and we make a lot of fun of it, you know. I, we, and, I, and we do a show, we do an hour and a half. And he, we, he said, so you went on the par show, right? And meanwhile, I got booked into the TikTok club in Bensonhurst, and you're on the par show. Then you went on to the Steve Allen show, and I got booked into the hi-hat club in Hoboken. You know, <laughs> but so so he was, the, you know, a, a struggling a young comic, you know, and I had gotten quite lucky with through winners. And then Howard became a director, a television director, and he became one of the busiest and most successful television directors at that time. He did just about all of Mork and Mindy, Rhoda. He did uh, uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. I mean, when I say did, I did a year or two or three, you know, uh, taxi. I mean, he, he did them all. So we sat down, you know, and said, you know, we should really do a show. So Howard and I are uh, are prepping the show. Uh, we're going to do the open at the Falcon uh, for, we're going to go to the Falcon for, for one night. We went to Theater West, well, you know, just shaping it and finding out. And that's the big thing in my life right now. What's the show exactly? It's called Harrington and Storm, Two Guys Doing a One-Man Show. And it is funny as hell. <clears throat> so is it uh, sort of your lives, your parallel lives? Your yeah, and, and you know, both our dads are in vaudeville. I mean, we have so much in common <clears throat> that uh, it serves us very well. Yeah, and and uh, our good friend Michael Rhodes, who is a terrific writer, he wrote and produced uh, things like Ellery Queen, and uh, uh, he's he's been our writer, and uh, the three of us together have have writ written this thing and put it together, and he's directing it. Fantastic. When does it go up? Well, we go there on the seventh uh, of August, and then. Uh, Hopefully, some other bookings in town thereafter. We'd like to get to the, when the when the new Geffen is done, uh, and they, uh, Gil Cates is putting in a uh, an additional room in, in in addition to the massive redo of the, uh, of the of the main Geffen. He's got a new small 187 seat uh, room. We'd like love to get in there. When are you coming to New York? Well, that'll be determined uh, by what we do at, if we get the Geffen. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I've been tempted to call Hal, but I'm not going to do that right away. I'm not. I'm going to wait. Right. Yeah. Do we give this some legs? So let's talk about what more TV. Sure. So you went on. You went. This is like you did the. You did the. Uh, you did the uh, showboat. Right. We moved in and. Uh, well, that was much later. I mean, that was in '97. Oh, okay. So I jumped up to to the. That was the apex. Of, ah, this uh, is the. Yeah. This is the. Uh, we're basically doing the nonlinear version. The what? Nonlinear. <coughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. I'm good that way. Oh, so good, are you? So you good. That, yes. That's good. You're that good that way. I'm very easy. <laughs> I'm a really tough. I haven't made you cry yet, so. It's just good. No, I'm not. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe I thought after Danny Thomas. Yeah, they said nah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, you had a lot of a lot of success on a lot of shows. There was a lot of 
guesting. Oh yeah, I you know I I I did uh, every television show there was I think except Sheriff of Cochise. I I didn't uh, I didn't do that one, but I did. I you know I you know I was available and I wanted to work and and you know I, um, these guys were seeing my face and other stuff and you know. Well, I remember seeing you on a lot of stuff. Monsters. Uh, you know a lot. I got a list. Got a list of stuff that you oh. <laughs> I got a mu I got a list. <laughs> that's a big list, yeah. That's a big list. Yeah, that's a big list. Um, let's spend some time talking about about one day at a time. Sure. Which is obviously what you're best known for. Sure. Um, how did that part come about for you? I went into audition. Um, my hair was just like it was. Uh, I had that that I had Levi's and and that that uh, Levi vest, you know, and and a and, and a T-shirt, you know. I, not, not that I was, you know. I just that's what I had on that day, and they liked my reading. And I went back in, and uh, uh, um, they said, you know, you've you've got the role. So, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I knew about Lear and I knew how how important he was and I knew what an investment in multiple multiple shows the network had with him so I said this thing could go this thing could be could be really good for me you know um, I didn't really have a handle on Schneider uh, and we did two pilots. Really? Yeah. I don't know if the network, network was too pleased with the first pilot, but before the second pilot, there was something I felt was missing. And I'm walking up and down the uh, hallway at CBS, and I see this guy walking around with a tool belt. And I said to him, "Listen, you're you're about my size. I'll give you." Fifty dollars for that tool belt with what you got in it. He didn't have it, you know, totally. He had, a, he had about six, seven, eight items. Yeah, but he had that roll-up tape that that's been there since Harding, President Harding, and uh, and he, he said, uh, okay. I said, listen, I'll give you seventy-five dollars for it. He said, okay. He took it off, put it on. This is twenty minutes before we shot the thing, and nobody knew, but nobody said anything. Nobody said anything, you know. Maybe it's because they were all in the booth and they weren't out on the floor looking, you know. And I, uh, when I, when I put that thing on, I just felt in my boots. I felt right. Don't screw around with me. I got this hammer here. What? Watch out, wow. I'm watching. You know, Schneider really started. To develop it. it came alive for you. Yeah, point. yeah, and uh, there was this wonderful, is this wonderful sound man we had on the show, Billy Spadaro, uh, who who uh, was uh, the uh, bosom buddy of our number one cameraman Vito Giambalvo. Now, do you think I'm going to get along with Spadaro and Giambalvo? With the with the Guido and the rest of it, the, the Italian these guys couldn't speak Italian, you know. But Billy, if the scene started with a Schneider line, regardless of the circumstances, Billy Spadaro, the guy would say action, and Spadaro would scream, "Make it live, Schneider!" <laughs> you know. So you're starting the scene with a smile and a giggle, you know. You're Starting it that way, and uh, you know, <laughs> and oftentimes when I when we finished the scene, I'd look over at camera one and and Vito would go, you know, the camera would be going like that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, what it was just, it was just, uh, we didn't, um, you know, the first we did the, I think we did our first show in. 76, 75, 76, and uh, we, d during the regular season, but in the summer reruns, we went through the 
Yeah, we went through the roof. And they gave us a pickup. And Norman got, you know, 22. 22 shows. Not bad at all. Not bad. Hey, I'm David Levin. Thanks for watching Pop Goes the Culture. Tomorrow, my archival chat with Pat Harrington Jr. continues with more about One Day at a Time, including his relationship with Norman Lear and Harrington's thoughts on Mackenzie Phillips' problems during the filming of that beloved sitcom. Till then, what was your favorite Norman Lear series? Let me know in the comments. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Want to be on TV? Don't miss Ask Them Yourself, a live show where you can be part of the conversation talking via Skype or FaceTime, Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific.